It's Radio 2 and a very warm welcome now to my guest on the show and that is Madonna. It's very, very nice to talk to you because it's been ages. Yes, how many years? How many decades? How many decades? Don't start with the ages and things straight away. Let's not go there. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. It's I'm fine. Sorry. It's I okay. Know, but it, I mean, I feel like I've talked to you many times throughout the years, but it's been, there's been a, a, like a longer stint than usual. It has, but that's because you haven't had an album out for a while. So th- this is the reason that we're talking now. And we nearly spoke because you're obviously, you're over, you did the Brits and then we nearly spoke, but events of the whole Brits kind of took yes, over. Yes, uh, but a, a cape got in between us. A cape did get in between us. <laughs> and a couple of, yeah. did you say, were they Japanese dancers that you said that kind of tried to tear the cape from you? Yeah, well, that was their job. That was, that was, they did th- what they were supposed to do. Yeah. <laughs> so, However, the cape had not been untied from around my neck, so. Yeah. Did the fall have any lasting physical effect? Did it, because you fell hard. Well, I did, although, I mean, it looked like I did, but I, at the end of the day, I didn't actually hurt myself, which was a kind of a miracle. Yeah, I was reading you put that down to your physical strength, a lot of it, and you've fallen from horses more than once. Yeah, I think um, it's a combination of just, I knew, like, my instincts kicked in, and when I felt myself falling backwards, it sort of tucked into a ball kind of thing. Yeah. And that helped a lot, but then also, I think I just, Got lucky. Yeah, yes, because you really could have done some serious stuff. In all the right, right places, and nothing happened. More, more like a shock than anything. Yeah. And then I just kind of kept going. And as I was dancing, I was like, "Well, I know I just fell, but and maybe something's going to start hurting in a minute." But nothing did. Wow. So you've not had to have any physio uh, or anything. I did hit the back of my head, and so everyone was worried about that and kept me up all night. The, the night, you know, the night between that and taping Jonathan Ross. So I was a bit, yeah. like, the next day, because I was so sleep deprived, not because I fell. Um, <laughs> I had a really hard time answering questions. I was like, huh? <laughs> I, no, I couldn't believe, I know that you had to go back and you had to go straight in the next day and do the Jonathan Ross thing. I couldn't believe how... No, I know, that was, that was really rough on me. Yeah, I'm sure. Have you watched it back? Because I know Jonathan tried to make you watch it back and you were just like, no, I really don't want to see this. Have you watched it since? I haven't. I don't. I don't like watching me uh, on anything, to tell you the truth. I hate watching myself. Because the experience of the actual thing that I did is never what I see. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'd rather just have the fantasy in my mind, what I thought it was. Okay, so this is because you, you have this vision and you are a perfectionist. And would you disappoint yourself if you watched it back? Is that what you're saying? Mm, no, not necessarily. I just think that performing is, is a physical experience. It's a physical, emotional experience that it's all inside of you. So what gets captured they happen to get a certain angle or they don't capture that right moment you know what i mean it's like it's not necessarily a disappointment but it's never what you experience so Mm. i'd rather just live with my real experience versus the what i always consider to be the less than exciting version of what they captured I know what you mean. Otherwise, you just you know start, I mean? yeah, yeah, you'd start beating yourself up about it or beating other people up about it, and just yeah, just move on. Be be brilliant in your head, and then just move on. Or, or it's not even like beating yourself up. It's like imagine, imagine you're madly in love with someone, and you're laying in their arms, and you're making out with them, and you're having the time of your life, and then you know you're feeling it, right? You're yeah. experiencing it, and then some, but someone films it, and then you watch the film. Okay. Yeah. And you're like, so well, that's not what I was. That's not how I felt. You know what I mean? It would somehow limit it. Yeah. The essence of it is not there. Yes, that's what I mean. I'm with you. You, you just take me to a very strange place. I was there, kind of imagining. <laughs> <laughs> so I was think of another like, like visceral, passionate experience that is somehow not yeah. best represented if someone films it. I know what you mean. Um, you, you're at home at the moment. I'm, just, I'm intrigued to know what your, your daily routine is, your morning routine, because I remember you coming in and co-presenting when I was at Radio 1. Um, do you remember back in the old days when we were both at Radio 1? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you had that, um, you had a bottle of green tea and you were just going, green tea is the future, this is the way forward. And people, nobody had particularly heard of green tea. Now everybody drinks green tea. So Yeah, no, I don't. Do you not? Why? Yeah. God damn, I've just I'm started drinking drink it. Coffee and espresso. <laughs> <laughs> coffee and espresso no, I drink I still drink it but not as much as I used to oh okay alright so yeah morning routine because I guess the family are all with you yeah but I mean it depends on what I'm doing because like morning routine when I'm taping shows and running around working is like I get shot out of a cannon but today because some of my kids are home from school and some of them are not it's m- m- more, much more relaxed I got to sleep in which is really rare for me 
What's your What's your idea of a sleep in? Sorry, what's your idea of a lie in? How late? Uh, sleeping till ten o'clock in the morning. Yeah, that's a lie in. Yeah. Do you do the school run sometimes? Do you get to do that? Mm, yes, which is you know always hard for me. In, no matter what time I get up in the morning, I always get to bed late. Okay. I'm a night owl, and it's hard for me to sleep. So often, getting up in the morning, it's like it's you know. I just thought would rather put a bag over my head. <laughs> The school run is never a pleasurable experience, is it? No, mine's normally... No. It's not. Mine's normally filled with Frozen. Have you had the Frozen experience? The film? The, as in the film, yeah, because I normally we drive to school and my daughter Coco, she's six, and she's just singing full blast. There's loads and loads of parents who probably listen to this show right now have had this experience of just singing Let It Go constantly. Yes, my children are obsessed with the song too, yes. Are they? Yes. That and not lots of other songs on the radio. Okay. It's shocking to me that they know every word to every song. <laughs> are they all into music or one of them more than the other yeah yeah they all are what, what's, what's your house consumed with what kind of things are they, have you got a sport going on in your house because you've got kids with such a wide range of ages as well um well my one son David is really into soccer yeah so there's lots of that we have a little garden in the backyard there's a lot of soccer and broken things in the backyard <laughs> next to the soccer ball um and mm, my other son's now into skateboarding which doesn't happen around this house but it happens downtown and around manhattan anywhere he can jump on a skateboard yeah has he broken um, anything yet yes many things <laughs> not in this house but yes <laughs> and then your daughter mercy what she's the frozen one yeah well her and david are into frozen oh. um but she's a gymnast and she plays piano everyone plays an instrument in the house that's required okay that's a that's a rule that's a rule okay Yep. Must play instrument or will be expelled. <laughs> Disinherited. Yeah. And you've been talking about your exes and boyfriends and things, but the thing that resonated with me the most... Yeah? Well, I you haven't... don't remember that. No, oh, no, you... Uh, I US... that only because Jonathan Ross probably probed a little bit too much. No, no, um, US Weekly, you talked about Vanilla Ice, I think. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I see. Okay. Yeah, okay. There, I was just going to say, the thing that resonated me, with me the most was that you said the only time that your heart was truly broken was when Lourdes went to college and left home. Mm, yeah. Can I... Well, can I'll say that. I didn't say that was the only time. I just said it was the more most intense heartbreaking pain. Can I just... More than breaking up with a boyfriend. Yeah, can I ask you to revisit that place for me again? Because I know a lot of people who listen to this show will have been through that or will be going through that right now. And I was exactly the same as you. It's just horrendous. Were you kind of, was you dreading the, the process of, of it kind of leading up to it? And then when she left, what, what were you I like? Was, I was, but I didn't really, I didn't really plan for how much it was going to hurt. Yeah, and honestly, you can't really prepare for it. It doesn't matter what people say. You know, to grow up with somebody for 18 years and have them in your life every second of the day. And to be, so you don't realize how attached you are until they go. Did you do the dropping off and then walking back into the house and just having that feeling of, she's gone, she's not here? All the, all the cliches. <laughs> <laughs> Did you cry well, everything you watched on television and every song that you heard? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I was a soppy mess. Called her up and cried. Sent her ridiculously tragic text messages. Stuff like that. This is where we're chatting to Madonna. I spoke to her and she was in the kitchen at her home in New York and we had a bit of a chat about all various different things. You've heard the first part of the interview. Um, the second bit, I started by asking Madonna about her upcoming world tour, which I know a lot of people want to know more details about. Uh, it all starts in August. Honestly, I'm just in the um, planning stages of the, of the show. I like people to have a mind-blowing experience when they watch my shows. Yeah. Okay. From the ridiculous to the sublime, from the big to the small. I, I can't get into any more specifics than that. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. It sounds and you interesting. want me to. I want people to be surprised. Yes. Okay, fine. Um, so do you have a moon, mood board, when you're, either when you're making a record or when you're doing the tour? Do you have kind of ideas yes. of... Yeah. So t talk to me about the mood board that would have been behind Rebel Heart. Well, the mood board for Rebel Heart was more about, like, people that I wanted to write with and people that I wanted to produce, like sounds and stuff. And it wasn't really, it wasn't necessarily connected to feelings or what the, you know, the content of the songs. It was really about songwriting and or, you know what I mean? Like, mm. people I wanted to work with. And so um, who, who was on the hit list? Who were the main people that you really wanted to work with? Well, like, f I wanted to work with Aziz's writing team because I liked a lot of the songs that he'd done. And they turned out to be amazing. 
And um, I wanted to work with Toby Gad and Rosella. I liked a lot of the songs that they'd written. Then I wanted to, you know, as far as producers go, I was really, really into working with Diplo, which yeah. I ended up working with. So, I mean, it kind of was uh, was kind of all over the place because I didn't really know what my record was going to end up sounding like. And I didn't want to, I didn't go into it with a specific plan. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I just really, my, my first goal and my most important goal was just to write good songs. And, you know, there were some people that I didn't end up working with that I wanted to work with. But, uh, you know, it's all got to do with scheduling and stuff like that. And it was going to be a double album, is that right, at one point? Yeah, I wanted to, because I found myself writing, um, when I was writing stuff, you know, it was like they were going, it was going from, I was, I found myself going from one extreme to the next. Like, I started off writing really personal, heartfelt songs that were kind of like reading out loud from my my diary or my journal, and then I ended up, and then I would write a song like Diamond Donna, or mm. Unapologetic with Diplo, and I thought, wow, this is like, so they're so opposite. <laughs> So then I thought, well, I'll just have, like, a two-sided record. Yeah. And, um, of course, that didn't work out. Now they're all mixed in together, and somehow I feel... I feel like they somehow all seamlessly connected to one another, because at the end of the day, they are all an extension of my personality. Yeah, and it's all about the texture of the album, isn't it? And um, why, why did... Sorry, just to elaborate for me, why it didn't end up as being a double album? Um, I, I think that... I think that my record company thought it might confuse people, like, which one should they buy, or, you know, I don't know. From a marketing point of view, I okay. they thought it was a good idea. And is, is it a fun album to be performing? Because, you know, you've been doing various different shows. Oh, yeah, I can't wait. I mean, I've, so, so far, I've loved, I've loved doing Living for Love and all the different versions, and I love singing Ghost Town. It, it's a very rewarding song to sing. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's been really fun. Okay. Um, who are your, can I just ask some of the other music and other artists that you're enjoying particularly at the moment? Are there any British artists that you're particularly taken with? Um, well, I love Sam Smith. Yeah. Isn't he the sweetest, sweetest person that you could meet? Oh, my God. He's so sweet. <laughs> I hope he always stays that way. He's lovely. Um, yeah, so I like him. How do you listen to music? What's, your, what's the system at home? Have you got, um, have, do, you have, do you have vinyl? Do you have just great big I sound systems? I have children who play music nonstop, <laughs> whether I like it or not. At all hours of the day. Okay. This morning I woke up to Nas, Wu-Tang Clan, and lots of... My son's really into 90s hip-hop, but he's also going through a Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin phase. But that's usually in the evening. So in the morning it's hip-hop, and the night is 70s rock. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, d does that actually influence what you're, the sound of the music that you're into, or the, the record that you're making? Do, do you think some of it seeps in? I'm not saying you're going to do a prog rock album or anything like that. I'm not now because I'm not working on my record. I think when I was working on my record before my daughter was still home, and I think she, you know, she's really into electronic music, and she was constantly turning me on to this, check this out, check that out, you know, listen to this sound, listen to this drop. Oh, my God, it's so amazing. Yeah. Lots of music getting played in long car rides. So I think maybe subliminally it affected me. Yeah, and uh, and so do they give feedback? Have you had feedback from your kids about the the record or the things that they've um, if they reviewed the album for you? Yeah, 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 yeah. They they they're really into um the stuff that I did with uh, um, obviously Diplo. They're huge Diplo fans. Mm. But um, my son Rocco has really eclectic taste, and he's really into um, the more acoustic sounding stuff, like Devil Pray, for instance. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I mean, they're f and then David's really a romantic, so he loves Joan of Arc, and they pretty much know all the words to all my songs. As they would, I'm sure they've heard it a few times. Would you would you write an autobiography? Final question: Would you have, have you considered writing an autobiography? Um, I'm sure I will one day. I've got so many tales to tell. <laughs> I guess your albums are, yeah, God, that, it would be quite a big sell. I'm sure your albums, though, are kind of your autobiography, but that is definitely a book that people would go for. Thank yeah, you. To it's just one slice of my life. If yeah. I wrote my book, it would be from start to finish, and that's a whole lot of ground to cover. <laughs> and would you be holding back at all, or you, do you think, you know, you need to, p people deserve to know everything, warts and all? I don't know. I think <laughs> I would tell the stories that I felt were valuable to tell, that were inspiring, that people could relate to, that... I mean, I'm a storyteller. That's what I think of myself as. And I would share stories that I think would inspire people. Fantastic. Thank you. Listen, um, hopefully we'll see you when you get over here to do the UK tour. It'll be good to uh, see you in the flesh. And thanks for talking to us. Yes, that'd be great. <laughs> All right. Take care, you. you. Bye. Okay. Bye, Joe. <laughs>